Welcome back, everybody, to more Let's Play Final Fantasy IV The After Years Blonde. And I know I started this floor. I think I went into that passage on the right. That's where I got the god hand, I believe. So we're going to get just continue on here. So I really hope, you know, the game, you know, with this impending fight, makes up for that sad excuse for a cutscene last time. And it was pointed out that we didn't actually learn a band from that cutscene. Which, while it is true, okay, save so point in there, I don't really mean it right now. Uh, I'm not really all that disappointed on that front because, uh, crap, someone said this is a maze. Because um, they already have a band together, while everyone else um, who has learned a band from a cutscene didn't have a previous band, so. I'm just disappointed in Edward here, man. I think, Ed, you know, Cecil needs to, you know, wake up from his vegetable state and bitch slap him. But anyway, um, since I have had people... Did I just go in a circle? Like, did I seriously just go in a friggin' circle? I think I just, yeah. I just went in a stinking circle. Nice. Now I probably just confused myself. But anyway, since I know it's been brought up um, a bunch of times in the um, in the several months se uh, since, uh, some people had issues with the fact that I was not thrilled about the scene which we first met. I'm just going to talk through some of these battles because I'm just going to get interrupted constantly, so apologies. But anyway, that I took issue with the fact that uh, Edward uh, was smashed by Cecil in his, you know, introduction scene. And some people took issue that I took issue with that scene. Now, because I mean, I'm talking about them hitting each other again, which is pretty funny. Now, in retrospect, I do think that bitch slap did do him a lot of good. However, I still think it was extremely rude and disrespectful for Cecil to do that right off the bat. If you remember the scene, you know, what happened? Uh, Cecil and Rydia are right there when Anna dies. And they're right there when she points out that he's the frickin' Prince of Damsian. Well, he was at the time, anyway. Um, and they're coming to seek his aid, alright? Now, I understand, you know, there is some sense of urgency here, you know, because if they don't get help, you know, Rose is gonna frickin' die. But, you just, they just witnessed this tragic scene. Okay. Rydia insults him. And that just, re you know, I mean, he's already was messed up at that point, but I mean, that really sets him off. And then to break him out of his funk, and I just went in a circle again, didn't I? Edward slaps him. And at this point, neither of them have introduced themselves or tell or have told him what exactly they need him for. They just outright are assholes to him. He's royalty, and they want him to help them. That is not a good first impression to make. And I will be the one of the people who will tell you that first impressions are not everything. I un I totally understand this. Because, you know, if we all base each other on just, just one negative aspect of other people, then nobody would ever be friends. Because nobody, even, the, even your friends and your loved ones, there's always going to be something they do that you do not like. Or something about them that you do not like. So for that reason, uh, first impressions can't be everything. Because... You know, you can always get a bad first, you know, good first impression of somebody, and they just end up being an asshole, because that does happen in life. Sweetness! But, for love of crap, they were just obnoxious to him. So, you know, while, you know, yes, I do think, in the end, you know, that... Let me make sure. I went through that one, I went through that one. Did I go over here? Yeah, it just looks like a long, long, narrow hallway that I don't want to go in if there's smaller rooms. But anyway, it's like, I always just felt that mean... Okay, was this... Oh, okay, I'm glad I went this way. This is probably the other side of where I just was. Haha. <laughs> I did go in here, right? This is what led me in a circle, yeah, okay. Alright, so I think I've gone everywhere in here. Okay, that was that, okay, alright. It's just in there. But yeah, so I still think that was... Oh, I'm glad I went that other way first. 
I mean, it just looks like long, narrow hallway. Just was hoping nothing was up. Just an empty room there. But yeah, I still think, I mean, I still think that was a jerk move. Even if in the end, it w you know, everything worked out okay. And, you know, Edward doesn't even begrudge either of them for what happened there. Even though I think both of them were being insanely... It's like he's just watched someone he, you know, loved die in front of them. And it's like, he, they know he's royalty, even if they only just found out through that scene, which I don't... I'm pretty sure DS makes it clear that they know, in general, who they need to speak to, when, you know, when they get to Dempsey and everything like that, but... It's like, seriously, it's like, uh, treat him a little better at first? Like, like, they were just so... I mean, I know I just said this, but I mean, they were just so rude to him in that opening scene. Hey, buddy, what's going on? See, we're back to lighting the safe points on fire. Do I even want to know why you're just hiding up there, Edge, or something? Well, he is a ninja. It's about friggin' time he actually exhibited some ninja traits, so... Meh. Must not make Pinky in the Brain reference. Must not make Pinky in the Brain reference. Oh, crap. Some big words there, Yang. You know, I wonder, are we just, like, dragging Cecil around with us? Because all these scenes would imply that even though we only, as a, from a player standpoint, only have five people in the party, that everyone is trudging along with us. It's just a matter of who we're controlling. So it's like, what are we, like, are we just dragging Vegetable Cecil around everywhere? Dude, I know Cecil's not a bad guy and everything like that, and he's been controlled, but god damn, Yang, you were so just naive of everything along wrong with him. You had never interacted with him. Well, I suppose we've been traveling here. That's a nice thing to say, Edge. Well, yeah, but I mean, for a 16-year-old, she is pretty darn badass, so... Oh, Ed, you're such a nice guy. Why do you have to act like a jerk sometimes? Because you're really not a bad guy. I don't wait till after this cutscene to put the thought on my mind, but I need to say it so I don't forget about it. Yes, Edge. Get on it. Edge, let's back the frig up here for a second. You are 43 years old. Alright. It is perfectly the fine time to start thinking about this stuff. Hell, you should have been thinking about this 10, 15 years ago. Okay. Okay, number one, you're not 20-something anymore. And number two, you totally do want kids because nobody who doesn't want kids yet talks about it like that. You are totally thinking about it and you're just being a chicken. I'm calling that right now. Yeah, that's kind of a point, but... Hooray! We learn more bands! Hooray! Yeah, I know I don't sound enthusiastic, but I really am. I'm just... Hot. It's like 90 degrees outside, so... But yeah, you certainly are thinking about the pitter-patter of little feet there. You totally are. You just don't want to admit it. But anyway.
anyway, um, I was going to mention this in the last episode, and I completely, completely forgot. Because I didn't think about it until after episode I had already uploaded level, uh, episode 11. But anyway, we already know, I'm just going to put it on the screen for a second while I focus my thought, that for whatever reason, we're led to believe that the moon that we're on is going to crash into the planet. So we're ripping off Majora's Mask. But given the conversation with Luca and Sid, apparently this thing is also the fucking Death Star. Can we rip off anything else here? I don't know. I know there's an elevator there, but I don't want to switch my party, so we're going to ignore that. I've been finding a bunch of crappy potions today. Holy cow. Alright. Come on, is all this bitching from Edge gonna pay off? Please give me some sort of little witty dialogue slash scene to go with this. For love of crap. Fire! <laughs> well, it's good to know you're still a total bro, Robicante, but on the other hand, it was just a safe point ten feet behind us, but... Yeah, I guess. Yeah, Edward, did you not get the memo from before? What? Are you joking me? Are you seriously yanking my chain? Is they're gonna let me fight this? With Edge? Soloing? Oh my god! Hell yes, we're gonna do that! Oh my god, that is awesome! Now hopefully the rest of the party lets me. Oh, please god, tell me you're gonna let me. Holy crap! Oh my god! I just had a freaking nerdgasm! This is totally awesome. Thank you, game, for actually... Where the hell are my spider socks? Doing is something right. And well. And good. And better than the original. Ow. Uh, we can do... Let's get some of that going. But anyway, I mean... I know Edge has not been shutting up about this ever since we started The Fiends and everything like that. And But I mean, for good reason, I mean... He's... Urukante has been featured twice throughout this game so far, and the last time, he was of major help to us. And if you remember back to the first game, this is the fight that Edge has been itching for for 17 years. Uh, before we meet him, he goes after, you know, he goes into the tower completely hellbent on kicking, you know, taking Rubicante down. And even though in their first encounter, you know, in the cave, he gets his ass totally handed to him. When he meets the party, he's like, no, this is my fight. And the only reason he backs down is because he's a giant teddy bear at heart and can't stand to leave Rydia crying. Ow. Uh, where's my healy thingy? I'm not going to use the Hermie Sandals just yet. Yeah, I'm still convinced. I'm, I'm mostly convinced at this point that Rubicante totally has a man crush on Edge. I'm sorry. Yeah, what are you doing, Rubicante? Okay, you, you totally healed me again. Is it over, or is this list like a mid-fight... Let's see. Well, that was easy as crap! I'm almost disappointed by that! Okay, that just... I'm, I mean, I'm really glad the game let us do this, but, but I mean... It deserved a little bit of more epicness than that, and... Okay, you totally blew it with that line of dialogue there, game. 
In the last encounter we had, you know, he was totally grateful, even though he hated to admit it, that Rubicante had totally saved his ass. But, I mean, at least he understood and everything like that. But, anyway, back to what I was talking about, you know, that, you know, Rydia is the only person, you know, it's, that's what gets him to back down and say, okay, let's do this together. And even though, you know, he does make very quick, genuine friends with the party and stays with them the whole time, you know, I do wonder if he ever had regrets that he was not able to finish the business he had set out to do originally. I mean, I think he's probably glad everything worked out for, you know, the way it did and everything like that, but... I just know you're still totally a bro, Rubicante. Wait a second. Just one second here. Is that totally his cape? Yeah, we're putting that on. Holy cow. Thanks, man. That was cool of you. You're pretty awesome, dude. And this square looks kind of creepy to me. Okay, so now we're in new step. Actually, give me one second here, guys, because I gotta check my notes. Because I wrote down um, who to swap in, like, when and everything like that, but... Okay, yeah, this is the point where I need Rydia, so I need to go back. See, yeah, I'll be right back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna swap on Rydia and, um, rearrange my equipment really quick, so I'll be right back. Alright guys, I changed my mind just a little bit here. I did change my, you know, change my setup a little bit and, game, you serious. But I'm curious to see how this fight goes when you don't fight this as just dead. So I just restored that that uh that previous save. I want to see what happens if you say no. Cause why the heck not? Maybe this fight won't be as such a pushover. It's the only real disappointment about it. You! Are you really surprised by this, Golbez? Are you really freaking surprised? Yeah, hopefully he doesn't, like, close his cape on me. Edward, you've been so awesome to me lately. Getting those haste marks on us. Yeah, you're awesome. Well, that did crappy damage, but then again, I don't really have Golbez pumped full of uh, intellect boosting equipment, so. That will certainly affect everything. I love how they have. I'm sorry, I love that flame effect when he goes to close his cape. I'm sorry, that is just plain awesome. And, and I can't tell. Is that a different sprite? To, I don't, probably not, because it seems like, you know, obviously a lot of stuff is reused, but for some reason I just don't remember that pose. But maybe I just... I can't remember how I did with him in the original. I know Rapunzel Barbie, I kicked the living crap out of her. No, you're not gonna do anything, but uh, I can't remember how it went with him. Cannot remember for the life of me. You think I would, because, you know, he's like totally, ow, uh, my favorite villain in the game. Without any sort of question or doubt or anything like that. Because even though he appears in very few scenes, he's got, he's, he's a great character. Which makes him awesome. See, I'm really glad they, they did that, where you could totally, 
totally sold the Spider's Edge. I think, you know, even though it could have been a hell of a lot more epic and should have been a hell of a lot more epic, I mean, at least they they had the foresight. Oh, sorry. He probably said the same damn thing he would have said before. But I mean, I'm glad they had, um, thought ahead to actually, you know, give Edge a little bit of closure there. So all his, you know, Rubicante's appearances totally, uh, had a payoff in the end. Like, he actually had, you know, a bit of an extra role in here, which is awesome. Still think he has a man crush on Edge. Totally think he does. And I, and I have wondered in the past, too, and, and this is just, you know, my, my own little headcanon speaking uh, about all this stuff. Um, I, I do sometimes wonder, like, especially how much that's gonna kill him again. Would you stop going after him? You know what? I'm gonna totally leave him dead. Actually, no, that doesn't really end up working out in my favor. Because I'm not keeping this save, so... Bleh. I was gonna say let Edward take the experience, but it's not even gonna matter. But, uh, anyway... To what I was trying to say, like, I keep, like, losing my train of thought here. I'm sorry, everybody. That original game, I do... Sort of wonder... Why he was attacking Emlon in the first place. Now, I know he's obviously one of the bad guys, but... He's the kind of guy who doesn't pick a fight for the sake of picking a fight. He's the kind of guy who wants to fight fairly. Eblon doesn't have anything that the villains want. I mean, yes, they're situated near the tower, but they're not directly in the way or anything like that. So, part of my own little silly headcanon involves, you know, given how much Rubicante is, you know, totally being, you know life coach from beyond or whatever for Edge here, that if, Ed, you know, if Rubicante was trying to challenge Edge in the first place, or, you know, we never find out, you know, anything about his parents before, you know, Dr. Wily totally goes after them and, you know, freaking tortures them for crying out loud. Um, so, you know, it's possible he might have been going after them or something, but I mean, I... It's never explained why Rubicante is even after them in the first place. Because they're not in the way. At all. Like, and they have, like, nothing of value for the villains. I mean, the only villainous thing we know that Rubicante is even involved in, it's like, yeah, you know he's working for Golbez, and you know he goes to the surface to, um, watch over the crystals. I mean, you know, because we see him leave before, you know we end up facing Dr. Wily, you know, before we run into Edge and everything like that. And I need to totally reset the game, and I'll do that right now. And that'll give me a chance to talk and finish what I'm saying here. Which I lost my train of thought again. Oh my god, my short-term memory is... My, sh my very short-term working memory is awful, guys. I'm sorry. But it just... It never made sense to me why they're going out of their way to attack them. I mean... Like, every other attack, it's like, obviously, we know, it, you know, before the start of the game, you know, the Red Wings attack Mysidia, take the crystal, they do the same thing to Dampsian and bomb the shit out of it, for crying out loud, like, like no one sustains more damage than they do, and then they do the same damn thing to Fabul, and they can't to Troya, I don't know why they don't even try, because really they don't, I mean, you find out the crystal's been stolen by the Dark Elf, and... Well, actually, no, never mind. There was a whole cutscene explaining, let's let Cecil do our dirty work for us. I almost forgot about that. How could I forget about that? So they don't they don't even get any attack, because, you know, they, they want Cecil to do their dirty work for them, but... Evon doesn't have anything they need. So it doesn't make any sense to me. Except if Rubiconte, you know, was looking for a fair challenge. Because it's not like him to just attack innocent people without something fair in return. And you know what? Did that chest appear if... 
I don't think I even looked to see if that chest is still... We still got that chest even if we, uh... Defeated him with the full party. You know, is that, is that the standard prize? Or do I get something special for just fighting with the Magister by himself? I don't know. I wasn't paying attention, so... <laughs> Heck with me. Alright, so anyway, back to my other save. I got Rydia in my party now, so... So I'm told I need her after this point, and... This is totally a maze, isn't it? Oh, look! Dragons! Yeah, I need to swap my rows. Um... Ow! Um... Yeah, that kind of sucked. A lot. moon am I on right now? And that was on the waxing? Oh my god! Holy crap! Jeez! Where are my tents? Yeah, I wasn't expecting to get my ass kicked, and now it's on the full, and... I'm I'm getting it off the full. I'm Oh, that's right. Sorry. Forgot tents don't revive. They do a DS. That's okay. I needed to shift it twice anyway. Holy crap. I'm 35 minutes in. Oh, no. Jesus Christ. But um anyway, I guess that's going to be all for this one then because I don't want to make this go on too long. So, I'm glad I kind of got the the epic fight, even though it could have been a hell of a lot more epic. But like I said, they had the foresight to do it. I suppose I can't complain about that. I just wish it was done a little better. But I'm, I'm you know, I'm glad they let Ed settle his inner demons a little there a bit. Although I wish there was a little bit more expositing on it. But whatever, I'm getting off track here. Um. I suppose next time we will not get our asses kicked by a bunch of thunder dragons. Why can I not equip dragon stuff on you people? Actually, I should double check my diamond equipment. See if I can get that on some of the people. I don't know how rare that encounter is, obviously, but... Obviously, I need to put some kind of lightning protection on if a crappy thunder spell and the waxing fucking killed three of my characters. I'm sorry. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.